what's up guys and welcome back to my channel this week my name is priscilla i'm a nigerian women's web designer based in the uk in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to make the pattern for this really cute shirt dress design i think what i really like about this shirt dress is i wanted to do something that was simple but had a little twist to it so it's about around my knee length and on half of the front and on half of the back has a pleated detail around the hem i did not include the cuff and you know that placket where buttons usually said i have not included that in this pattern so i plan on doing that in the future because i've not really like solidified it a hundred percent and i didn't want to show you guys something i wasn't sure of so it's just going to be a simple sleeve collar around the neck button up the front and then that pleated detail down the side but if you guys like to see how i came up with design make sure to keep on watching i've already sewn the pattern to test to see if it works so that's going to be in a separate tutorial coming up in the future so don't worry I have you covered <laughs> so if you guys would like to see how i made this pattern make sure to keep on watching subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be the very first to know whenever i have new videos up on the channel every single week and without further ado let's jump straight to this video because i love 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 how this pattern turned out For this shirt dress design, I'm going to be using the following tools to achieve the patterns. I'm going to be needing my basic sleeve block and I'm going to be changing it up a bit just to take out a lot of ease from the sleeve head. I'm also going to be needing my front and back basic bodice. I'm also going to be using my pattern master and set square. Side along with those, I'm going to be needing tape measure and some tape. I also have gotten my marker pen and tracing wheel i also have my paper scissors as well as my roll of pattern paper which i'm going to be linking down below i've linked all of these tools and patterns in the description box for you guys so the first thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to duplicate my front pattern and i've made a few changes to it so the first thing i've done here is i've raised the front neckline by about 1.5 centimeters and i've connected it round to the shoulder to the side and the dress length is 81 centimeters or 32 inches i also added about an inch or three centimeters hem allowance i transferred my front dart as well and i extended my center front by 11 centimeters or four inches this is going to become our button stand because when you fold this inwards and stitch it down with that one centimeter close to the front, you have the panel on which you can fix your button and button holes. So this would all make sense when I actually sew the dress together. So these are all of the adjustments I've made to the front as mentioned earlier on, which includes making the front longer, extending the center front, raising the front neckline, as well as transferring my dart. So the the next thing I'm going to be working on is to make the collar stand in which the collar sits. So I've gotten some fresh pattern paper about this size and I'm going to be tracing out the new front neckline starting from our center front around that front curve the shoulder points as well and i'm just going ahead to connect the dots i've made using my pattern master and my marker pen once that is done i'm going to go ahead and extend from the shoulder upwards by about 9.5 centimeters or four inches and this is half of your back neckline so whatever half of your back neckline is, is how much you would extend from the shoulder point upwards like so so the collar stand is about 2.5 centimeters or one inch wide i like to have mine relatively narrow because you still have your collar sitting into this particular piece here so i don't like to have my very chunky i like it on the smaller side usually around two or 2.5 centimeters so i'm just marking 2.5 centimeter all the way across like this because we're going to be connecting it together to make our collar stand so i'm just quickly going on here to add extra pattern paper because i needed some extra on the front 
which requires me to trace off the button stand which is half of the extension that we did for the front like so so i'm just going in here to draw in the line connecting my center front line to that fold point and then i'm marking on an extra 2.5 on this extended piece here and i'm just going ahead to connect my dots together to make my color stand and i'm doing so using my pattern master and my marker pen drawing in curved points along the curved side of the front neckline and then when i get to the center front you're going to draw in a curved angle like this i like having it curved like so because it just flows nice and neatly into the rest of that front neckline so this is going to become your color stand you need to cut that center back on a fold so you have one piece that wraps around the neckline of your shirt so you just go ahead and add your one centimeter or however much seam allowance that you like to work with all the way around except that center back point that side has to be cut in the fold so you would need to cut two of these which is a pair and then when you join them together you have your color stand that sits on your shirt so these are my front pieces i made another side for the front because the dress has an asymmetric hem the other side of the front is as long as up to the hip line so wherever your hip line is is where you will cut the other side and like sort of stop there and the longer side like i mentioned earlier on is 81 centimeters or 32 inches and when you're cutting this on fabric remember to mirror the pattern in such a way that one side is on the right side of the material and the other side is on the right side of the material so when you cut it you have a pair that match together does that make sense but next up i'm going to be working on the collar itself and i will be needing my collar stand to do so so i've grabbed my collar stand and some fresh pattern paper and i'm just tracing along the seam line like so tracing the neckline transferring my notches as well as my center back point and i'm going to be drawing in the shape of the collar that i want so i want a quite big and bold and pointy collar you can decide on whichever shape you like you can decide to go for a more rounded color something thinner but i knew from the onset that i wanted the color that was on the bigger side so i'm just grabbing my set square and i'm going to be drawing a line that is diagonal from that center front point it's about two centimeters from the center front as you can see and i'm going to be drawing a vertical line up the center back like so so like i did earlier on i added a a bit of extra pattern paper for that side of the collar for it to work and the center back line that is vertical is seven centimeters or about three inches tall this i'm going to be connecting to the diagonal line as i'm doing right now using my set square so once that is connected and in place i went ahead and i added a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around except my center back because I don't want to have a seam on the center back of my collar so I'm just going in here to transfer all of my notches because without these notches it would be difficult to connect the collar to the collar stand so the center back is going to be cut in the fold I've drawn in my grain line I'm writing my annotations and how many pieces I need to cut and you need to cut a pair of this collar piece itself for it to come out nice and neat so this is the collar all done i just cut it out so we have it ready to use and it's it will be connected to the color stand along this edge like this so when i'm doing the sewing tutorial you would see how these pieces sort of merge together how they are connected and how many you need to cut now moving on to my back patterns i went ahead and created a pair of back patterns like we did for the front so you would want to cut a back that is as short as your hip length and one that is as long as 81 centimeters or 32 inches but i took away two centimeters from the waistline so that back of the dress really goes in nice and flat when you have the garment on so this is what the back patterns look like i decided to put a seam along the center back because of that sort of extra that i put in the middle of the center back of the dress so it just fits even nicely when you have it on 
So for the sleeves, I didn't change much. The two main things I did was I dropped the sleeve head by about five centimeters or two inches to take away the extra ease that the sleeve has along the sleeve head. And then I made it about 22 inches long, adding an additional two inches for the hem. And ensure that when you are doing this hem here, you fold it up like I'm doing. So when you stitch it up, the edges of the side along the hem correlate to the edge of the seam this is something that i just learned from experience when you start to actually cut things that don't have straight edges you would want to sort of make sure that they match along the edge of the seam so once that is all done i'm just going ahead to make my pleat panel which is a rectangle that measures the dimension 23 or 9 inches by 65 or 26 inches and what this essentially is is half of your front and half of your back together times two because we're going to be pleating that panel into that side of the dress you want it to be longer than the original measurement so i'm just cutting the pattern on a fold because i'm just conserving pattern paper but you can decide to do a long rectangle that is the actual measurement of your body or of your dress so i'm just going in here to add my three centimeter or one inch hem allowance adding my grain line and indicating what exactly this particular pattern is so once that is done i'm going to cut this out and just double check that my measurements are correct before finalizing and working with this pattern piece so as you can see here the, i'm just testing to check that it's wide enough for the half of the back i will check with the front and if it's not i will go ahead and add extra pattern paper just to be sure so i went ahead and i added a bit of extra pattern paper just to make my pleat panel even wider because the wider it is the more pleats you have to go into that particular part of your dress so that's just left for you to decide but that's a formula that i worked with so with that done all of the patterns are complete and this is them laid down nice and flat i think the only thing that you should just be aware of is when you're cutting these pattern pieces especially for the main fronts and backs the long sides have to be together and the short sides have to be together so when you're cutting your fabric especially if your fabric has a wrong and a right side just be aware of that so you don't end up with two fronts that are the same side and they don't match the back of the dress design so once that is sort of taken care of the rest of the dress is relatively straightforward and easy to make but not to worry there is a sewing tutorial coming up in the future so you guys will be able to recreate it for yourself in your own free time but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video the same if you did please give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next one bye